Hello everybody, this is uh, a recording for week 4's uh, passages from Midsummer Night's Dream. Okay, so we're going to be starting with Act 3, Scene 2, and we're going to start from that line 40, uh, Oberon's speech, stand close, this is the same Athenian, uh, to line 175. Okay, so the reading of the scene, um, and then a few remarks about it. Starting then from line, I think it's line 41, uh, Oberyn, Oberyn starts, Stand close, this is the same Athenian. This is the woman, but not this the man. This is Puck, obviously. Demetrius, oh, why rebuke him that loves you so? Lay breath so bitter on your bitter foe. Hermia, now I but chide, but I should use thee worse, for thou, I fear, has given me cause to curse. If thou hast slain Lysander in his sleep, being Oshua's in blood, plunge in the deep and kill me too. The sun was not so true until the day as he to me. Would he have stolen away from sleeping Hermia? I'll believe as soon this whole earth may be bored and the moon may through the centre creep, and so displease her brother's noontide with the, with the antipodes. antipodes. It cannot be but thou hast murdered him. So should a murderer look, so dead and grim. Demetrius. So should the murdered look, and so should I, pierced through the heart with your stern cruelty. Yet you, the murderer, look as bright, as clear as yonder's Venus in her glimmering sphere. Hermia, what's this to my Lysander? Where is he? Ah, good Demetrius, will you give him me? Demetrius, I'd rather give his carcass to my hounds. Hermia, out, dog, out, cur. Thou hast driven me past the bounds of maiden patience. Hast thou slain him then? Henceforth never be numbered among men. Once tell me true, tell true even for my sake. Durst thou have looked at him being awake? And hast thou killed him sleeping? O oh, brave touch! Could not a worm and adder do as much? An adder did it, for with doubler tongue than thine, thou, thou serpent never adder stung. Demetrius, you spend your passion on a misprized mood. I am not guilty of Lysander's blood, nor is he dead for aught that I can tell. Hermia, I pray thou tell me then that he is well. Demetrius, and if I could, what should I get there for? Hermia, a privilege never to see me more. And then from thy hated presence part I so, see me no more, whether he be dead or no. Demetrius, there is no following her in this fierce vein. Here, therefore, for a while I will remain, so sorrow's heaviness doth heavier grow, with debt that bankrupt sleep doth sorrow owe, which now in slight measure I, it will pay, uh, if for his tender here I make some stay. Oberon, what hast thou done? Thou hast mistaken quite, and laid the love juice on some true love's sight. Of thy misprison must perforce ensue some true love turned, and not a false turned true. Puck, then fatal rules that one man holding troth a million fail, confounding oath on oath. Oberon, about the wood, go swifter than the wind, and Helen of Athens look thou find. All fancy sick is she, in pale of cheer, with sighs of love that cost the fresh blood dear. By some illusion see thou bring her here. I'll charm his eyes against she do appear. Puck, I go, I go, look how I go, swifter than an arrow from the Tartar's bow. Squeezing the juice on Demetrius's eyelids, Oberon says, flower of this purple dye, hit with curved Cupid's archery, sink in apple of his eye, where his love he does espy. Let her shine as gloriously as the Venus of the sky. When thou wakest, if she be by, beg of her for remedy. Puck, captain of our fairy band, Helena is here at hand, and the youth mistook by me, pleading for a lover's fee. Shall we there, there, fond pageant see? Lord, what fools these mortals be. Oberon, stand aside. The noise they make will cause Demetrius to awake. Then will two at once woo one, then must needs be sport alone, and those things that do best please me, thou before preposterously. Enter Lysander and Helena. Lysander. Why should you think that I should woo in scorn? Scorn and derision never come in tears. Look, when I vow, I weep, and vow so born in all the nativity or truth appears. How can these things in me seem scorn to you, bearing the badge of faith to prove them true? Helena, you do advance your cunning more and more when truth, kill, truth kills truth. Oh, devilish holy fray, these vows of Helena's, Hermia's, will, you, will thou give her o'er? Weigh oath with oath, and you will nothing weigh. Your vows to her and me, put in two scales, will even weigh, and both as light as tails. Lysander, I had no judgment when I had to her swore, nor none in my mind, now you give her oar. Demetrius loves her, and he loves not you. Demetrius waking, oh, Helen, goddess, nymph, perfect, divine, to what my love shall I compare thine eyne? Crystal is muddy, 
Oh, how ripe in show thy lips, those kissing cherries tempting grow, that pure congealed white high tartar snow, fanned with the eastern wind, turns to a crow when thou holdst up thy hand. Oh, let me kiss this princess of pure white, this seal of bliss. Helena, oh, spite, oh, hell, I see you all all bent to set against me for your merriment. If you were civil and you courtesy, you would not do me thus is so much injury. Can you not hate me as I know you do, that you must join in souls to mock me too? If you were men, as men you are in show, you would not use a gentle lady so to bow and swear and superpraise my parts when I am sure you hate me with your hearts. You are both rivals and love Hermia, and now both rivals to mock Helena. A trim exploit, a manly enterprise to conjure tears up at a poor maid's eyes with your derision. derision. None of noble sort would so offend a virgin and extort a poor soul's patience, all to make you sport. You are, Lysander, you are unkind, Demetrius, be not so, for you love Hel Hermia, this you know I know, and here with all good will and with my heart in Hermia's love I yield you up my part, and yours of Helen to me bequeath what I, I do love and will do until my death. Helena, never did mockers waste more idle breath. Demetrius, Lysander, keep thy Hermia, I will none. If I loved her, all that love is gone. My heart it to her is but as a guest wise sojourned, and now to Helen it is home returned, there to remain. Lysander, Helen, it is not so. Demetrius, disparage not thy faith, thou dost know, lest in thy peril thou abide it, dear. Look where thy love comes, yonder is thy dear. Okay, so a confusing scene. Here then we have the uh, three lovers in the wood. The fourth will arrive. Um, Puck, obviously, uh, and Ob Oberon start off the scene by seeing Demetrius and Hermia arrive. Hermia is looking for Lysander, obviously, and Demetrius uh, is still pledging uh, his truth to, to, uh, to Helena. Um, he, uh, Demetrius is asleep at the moment. So he will see Helena one evening when he wakes up. Um, uh, he, Demetrius, um, has still the, uh, the, 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 the love for Helena in his heart. And Hermia thinks that he's killed Lysander. And so therefore all the ideas of murder, the murder of the foe, the one you hate, etc. Um, the idea of sport here is fun, is joking, mockery. Um, uh, Shakespeare is mocking true love because with a little bit of uh, juice here, a little bit of um, flower juice, everything changes um, and they they fall in love with the other woman. Um, uh, Demetrius says he's not guilty of slaying Lysander and we have a lovely uh, antimetabol um, uh, through uh, Oberon's speech. Some true love turned and not a false turned true. Uh, 90, what likes line 91? Um, the, the, an anti-metabol is a line that um, uses the same words but in a different order. Now Oberon squeezes the juice on Demetrius's eyelids when he falls asleep and therefore then what happens he falls in love with Helena instead of Hermia. So both men are under the, um, under the influence of the love juice. Um, Helena still does not believe um, that either of the men are in love with her. She wishes or had wished uh, Demetrius to be so, but she knows that Lysander, um, it's not really what his heart's desire, but she doesn't realise, of course, that uh, he's under the uh, effect of the love juice squeezed on his eyelids by, by Puck. Um, we've got some uh, some uh, isocolon, you both are rivals and love Hermia, and now both rivals to mock Helena. Okay, so it's word matching, rivals, rivals, love and mock. Okay, uh, that's line 155. Um and Helena, Hermia comes in at the end, obviously, um, completely uh, in the dark about what has been, what has happened. Um, she doesn't understand that um, uh, that Lysander has been fallen foul of Puck, and still thinks that he's in love with her, and can't understand why he's suddenly fallen with Helena. So, all this scene is to do with an immense confusion. Um, if you get confused, and that's what that's what Shakespeare is doing to all of us as readers and as spectators of the play. Um, he is stirring up confusion between the lovers and he's stirring up confusion between the various people, um, the various lovers. And in front of the spectators, they are just as confused as anybody else. So confusion reigns, um, but it's all of the of the playwrights doing and that's what he's up to. 
and that's his uh, his uh, aim in this in this scene. Okay, thank you very much. Speak to you later.